So the markets are trading in the green just above 4,000 points. Last week, uh, volatility of the shilling and weakness weighed heavily on the markets. What's the story today? Um, thanks a lot. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a shilling. Last week we saw the shilling sway the market a lot. Uh, and it was especially very clear on Tuesday uh, when the shilling took, uh, I mean, set a uh, the rock record all-time low and that same day we saw the NSC drop about 17 points and it's also the same Tuesday that we the, the planning minister announced um, it released the economic uh, survey report for 2010 and uh, actually the minister expressed some uh, level of uh, bearishness in the economy uh, pegging the growth at 3.5 4 to 4.5% actually this has really uh, they really weighed on the market last week. Let's talk about the shillings volatility and its weakness. Uh, today it, it hit somewhere in the region of uh, 85 shillings, 74 cents. We have seen the CBK very active just by way of uh, trying to mop up uh, excess uh, shillings within the market involved in euro sales. The strategy, in your views, is it working? Will it work? I don't think the CBK strategy is working. Actually, in fact, on the contrary, in my opinion, I think um, the shilling retreating against the dollar is partly, actually, it's entirely because uh, banks are really pulling back. You know, there's a lot of pullbacks from the banks trying to cash in on gains uh, when the shilling is at that level. And actually, even not even banks, other players in the uh, forex market uh, trying to engage in a lot of pullbacks. Mm. And that's what's pulling the shilling. I don't think the CBK's action, the market put right. in the shillings. How much more volatility will you expect? Because obviously in the first quarter of this year, banks have gained somewhere in the region of 73% in terms of forex sales. Yeah, actually that's true. And despite what I'm telling, uh, what I'm trying to say that banks, uh, pullbacks, you know, it's huge, it's massive for them. If you look at the key one uh, ac across all the spectrum of the financial sector players, uh, Forex line item was huge, 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 huge. In fact, some banks tripling their Forex income. Mm. Uh, and this is because of pullbacks, um, booking gains for the shilling. And how much volatility the econo economy can take, um, it, 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 it's really, I don't think the economy can shrug off this. And mm. uh, in my opinion, it's not a good sign for the economy. Right. Uh, we, we, will, we will see some companies reporting their results and then and, incurring and huge forex losses just because of the shilling volatility. All right, let's talk about some of those company results. The senior results out. Uh, revenues up in the region of 39%. Boosted, interestingly, by um, growth in uh, sales for Arabica coffee, which is really where Kenya struggles a lot. Now, the agricultural sector is really where they are susceptible to the exchange rate. Explain Sassini's uh, results to us. Sassini results, um, I think probably the market had seen this. Uh, you have a combination of factors, a matrix of issues uh, dictating the, 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 the company's fortunes, the market. You have um, an exchange rate volatility. You have oil uh, uh, crude prices surging. You have a drought, which really impacted the uh, production capacity. And you look at all these uh, and the international co uh, the, the, the high, actually, Tea and coffee prices in the international market have really remained high and partly occasioned by the, uh, the, the shortfall in the demand in the supply. And all these, if you look at the oil price, uh, high oil prices and the drought, it wiped out all the gains that uh, the company would have made out of the exchange rate volatility and the high tea and coffee international uh, prices in the international market. So a combination of these really wiped down most of the gains the company would have made Mm. Um, for the first half of the year. And actually, when you look at the second half of the year, even the uh, management, uh, they are quite mixed on it. They, it's a bit grim because mm. the rainfall is a bit, you know, uh, snow here is here and there mm. and not good for agricultural production. Right.